Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we are looking at the Asus P8Z60E-V Pro slash Gen 3 motherboard. This is a LG1155 socket motherboard with the Intel Z68 chipset. Here's the box. Once again you see it on the box we are looking at the Asus P8Z68-V Pro slash Gen 3 motherboard. So what Gen 3 is all about is it fully supports PCI Express 3.0 but to make use of that feature you'll need a 22 nanometer CPU which is Intel's upcoming Ivy Bridge processor. Right here you can see this board has dual intelligent processors so basically DigiPlus VRM together with EPU and TPU so great tweaking possibilities. Like I said before, it's using the Z68 chipset which supports the Lucid Virta technology and of course AMD Crossfire X and Nvidia SLI is supported. On the bottom it says it's the most precise DigiPlus VRM, then it has some GPU boost technologies and also supports Bluetooth devices and WSB 3.0 access. And one of the best things this board has to offer is the graphical UEFI BIOS which should be easy and flexible according to ASUS. On the back of the box you basically get the same stuff repeated but here's the motherboard layout for example there's also a little graph showing you how stable this board is but now let's take a look inside right on top is the motherboard itself and an anti-static bag underneath are the accessories there's the IO shield too bad it isn't color coordinated but it's well protected against static interference then there's the Nvidia SLI bridge here are the four SATA cables, two of them are SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, the standard black ones SATA 3 gigabits per second. Then there's a front panel header to make the connections easier and the same header for internal USB. Then you get the USB 3.0 expansion, so you will have four USB 3.0 ports right out of the box, which is a great thing in my opinion. And of course the manual with the drivers and the sticker. And lastly, the quick start guide. So here's the motherboard itself. Right off the bat you can see it's laid out very well, but the PCB itself is very weak and can be bent very very easy. The socket this motherboard uses is the LGA1155 socket from Intel. You can install the second generation Intel Core i3, i5 and i7 processors, but what's special is the support for the upcoming Ivy Bridge processors, so the third generation. So you can install an Ivy Bridge CPU in there and you also get PCI Express 3.0 support since this board already has the new slot. This board offers 4 DIMMs that support the dual channel technology. The maximum amount of memory you can install is 32GB. Supported frequencies go all the way up from 1066MHz to 2200 megahertz of course at OC and of course the Intel Extreme Memory Profile technology also known as XMP is supported. The slots itself open on one side only that's the special design that ASUS is using now. Now to the 8 SATA ports on the motherboard. The two gray ports are SATA 6 gigabit per second and run off the Intel Z68 chipset. The four blue ones are SATA 3 gigabits per second and run off the Z68 chipset as well. But the two navy blue ports are SATA 6 gigabit per second and run off the third party Marvel chip. As you can see right there this motherboard has three PCI Express slots. The first navy blue slot is a PCI Express 3.0 slot that runs at X16 when using a single graphic card. The second gray slot is a PCI Express 3.0 slot as well that runs at X8. When using a two-way crossfire or SLI configuration, both slots will run at X8. The third and last black slot is a PCI Express 2.0 slot that runs at X4 only. The PCI Express 3.0 slots are backwards compatible with PCI Express 2.0 graphics cards by the way. Then the board also offers two PCI Express 2.0 X1 slots and two standard PCI slots. Now to the headers. Right here is the front panel header. Then there are two IEEE 1394A headers and the three USB 2.0 headers. And lastly the SPDIF out and front panel HD audio headers. And right here is the USB 3.0 header in its right place. Then where most of the headers are you get the power and the reset switch. On the top right hand corner of the board is an EPU and a TPU switch. Also right beside these two switches is the round mem OK button. Right beside the SATA ports is the one and only BIOS chip. This motherboard is using a 16 phase power design, 12 phases for the CPU and 4 for the integrated CPU graphics. The Intel Z68 chipset will stay very cool with that heatsink that rests on top and the VRM should stay very cool as well with that heatsink. Now to the rear I.O. Here you get 4 USB 2.0 ports, 
then that's the Bluetooth module, then two more USB 2.0 ports and an eSATA port. Then there's an optical SPDIF out port and underneath is a HDMI port. Of course there's a VGA and a DVI port as well. There's your Intel Gigabit LAN port and two USB 3.0 ports. And last but not least the analog 8 channel audio jacks that is powered by the Realtek ALC892 audio codec. This motherboard has its 24 pin power connector just in the right place as well as the ATX 12 volt 8 pin power connector. Now to the fan headers on the motherboard. On the top left hand corner is the power fan 2 header and when we move to the right there is an optional CPU fan header and the standard CPU fan header. On the top right hand corner is the power fan 1 header. Then beside the PCI Express X1 slot is the chassis fan 1 header and the chassis fan 2 header is near the 24 pin power connector. Unfortunately I had bad experience when I actually tested this motherboard out. The first issue I ran into was the audio recording. To me it looked like it was a problem with the Realtek ALC892 audio codec, but I'm not sure if it really was. Whenever I tried recording with the microphone I ended up with poor quality and a horrible static noise. I tried several microphones and also tried installing older drivers, then switched back to the latest, then something in between and so on. But I just couldn't fix that issue. Then I tried to record with stereo mix, so basically what you hear from the computer. It didn't produce the static noise, but the quality was horrible, especially when there were more decibels. In recording software, the sound waves were cut and limited. The sound didn't actually find its end, and so the quality was bad. For both microphone and stereo mix, I tried to do some tweaking, turning the enhancements on and off, but no noticeable difference. Then I contacted the ACES support, but they unfortunately couldn't help me out. So they told me to bring it back to the vendor and so did I. I then got a new one and tried recording sound with that one. And sadly it didn't fix the problem, everything remained the same. To make matters worse, I found out that the power consumption was totally different than like it was with the previous motherboard. I got the exact same motherboard, same revision, same model and the exact same components were installed. On idle I used like 10 watts more than with the other one. Of course on load I saw the same thing, just higher than 10 watts. I updated to the latest BIOS version by the way, on both of the motherboards I've tested. I enabled C1E, C3, C6 and things looked better then. But still it was higher power consumption. So for a sound problem a separate sound card would fix the problem. But for the power management I don't know. Was it just me that had bad luck or are all these boards like that? The ASUS P8C68-V Pro slash Gen 3 motherboard is a great motherboard when it comes to the features and tweaking, but in my case I experienced lots of problems. I really tried my best to get them fixed and forget about these problems, but I couldn't fix them. Pros are great layout, tons of features, then the graphical UEFI bias, and last but not least the full support for the upcoming Intel Ivy Bridge CPUs with the PCI Express 3.0 slots. Cons are the PCB is weak, the audio recording quality is very bad and the heavy power management problems. Unfortunately I have to give this motherboard a 1 out of 10 and wouldn't really recommend it. For the features I definitely would, but just because of the heavy problems I can't. Thanks for watching.